What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my Samsung Galaxy A21 review. So let's get started. So this is my review of the new Samsung Galaxy A21. Now this phone is the successor to last year's Samsung Galaxy A20. And I do have a dedicated comparison video between this phone and that phone here on the channel already. So go over there to see everything that is new with the A21 compared to the A20. But this video is going to focus on everything about this phone so that you know exactly what you're getting into if you do happen to buy it. Now the Samsung Galaxy A21 is being offered at a variety of different carriers and is also likely going to be offered factory unlocked very shortly. So definitely take a look at the links in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing for the phone, as I'm sure over time that will change. Now the Samsung Galaxy A21 features a very large 6.5 inch display. Now in 2020, that's a really good thing to have because more now than ever are people using their devices to watch video content, go on social media, browse the web, and do a lot of things beyond just making phone calls and sending text messages. So the display on here is very large. It is an IPS LCD display at 720p. Now despite this being LCD and despite it being 720p, I think the phone still does have a good looking display. So colors are very nice on here, and you'll see more of that later on in the video. But also, everything looks nice and crisp and clear as well. So Samsung did a really great job with this display. It is a bit of a downgrade from the A20 from last year because that phone had AMOLED. But again, I go over all of that in that specific comparison video. Now with the device, we're getting a PPI of 270. We're getting a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, so a narrow but tall form factor here with the phone. And we're getting a 79.3% screen to body ratio. So not a fantastic screen to body ratio, but also not a really bad one either. So at the bottom of the device, we do have a decently large bottom bezel. And then all the other bezels around the phone are not necessarily large, but they're not really tiny either. So I still like the general design of the phone. I also really like that we are getting a hole punch for the front facing camera, but definitely comparing this device to more premium counterparts, such as the Galaxy A51 and A71, we do have a design here that's a little bit inferior. Now the front facing camera is 13 megapixels. Stay tuned to later on in the video as I'll show you photo and video samples from it. With the Samsung Galaxy A21, we are getting 32 gigabytes of internal storage with microSD card expansion. Now 32 gigs is not impressive at all, especially when other phones that rival this, such as the LG Stylo 6, offer 64 gigs. Now since getting this phone, I have installed a variety of my own applications, which I like to use, and I've also taken a decent amount of photos and videos, and I'll show you right now how much storage remains on the phone. So you can see here, I do have 14.2 gigabytes of the 32 available. So that's not really a whole lot. Now thankfully, the phone does support microSD card expansion, and I definitely recommend getting a microSD card, but I really wish this phone did come with 64 gigs. Now there might be other variants of the device that launch in the future that do offer 64 gigs, and if that happens, then I definitely recommend going with that variant of the phone. But all I know is, is that the unit I have here has 32 gigs, and it's not quite enough. But at the same time, it's not too little that it makes it a deal breaker. Now there's no wireless charging with the Samsung Galaxy A21, but we do get a fingerprint sensor on the back. So we'll give that a try right now. That was very fast. In addition to that, we're also getting face unlock with the phone, so you do have multiple methods beyond the pin code to unlock the device. Now also on the back of the phone is a quad camera setup. So this is one of the biggest innovations this year with the A21, is that we are getting four different cameras. So we're getting a 16 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. Now in addition to having portrait mode with the rear camera on the device, we also get it with the front facing camera, and it actually does a really good job. 
Here's how things look on the camera app. This is with the standard main camera. Now I'm going to switch over to the ultra wide angle camera and you can see that I can fit a lot more content here into the frame. Then from there I can go to live focus to use portrait mode or I can go over to more and then from there I can get to the macro camera and then I can take very close up photos of different objects. So definitely a very well-rounded camera experience here. Again, stay tuned a little bit later on in the video as I'll show you photo and video samples from it, but I definitely am very impressed with the cameras on the device. Now, the Samsung Galaxy H21 features three gigabytes of RAM and the MediaTek Helio P35. Now, three gigs of RAM is okay in 2020, I would have really liked to see 4 gigs of RAM, especially considering the price of this phone. And the MediaTek Helio P35 is pretty average as well. Now I did do a benchmark test with the device, and I got an overall score of 104432. So for most people out there that will get the job done, it's definitely a dramatic step down from the various Galaxy S20 flagship phones. But again, for most people out there, this device will get the job done for basic social media tasks. Also watching video will be nice and smooth. And then if you wanna do phone calls and text messages, that won't be a problem either. But it's also not extremely powerful. I definitely recommend, if you can afford it, to go for the Samsung Galaxy A51 instead, as you will get better performance from the processor on that device. Now video recording with the phone maxes out at 1080p, and that is a consequence of having the MediaTek Helio P35 because that processor does not support 4K video. Now the Samsung Galaxy A21 features a beefy 4000 mAh internal battery with 15 watt fast charging compatibility. So it is nice to see that we are getting a large battery with the phone. That's always very much appreciated. Now the software on here is Samsung's One UI 2.0, laid over Android 10. So in my opinion, that's one of the highlights with this phone because Samsung did do a nice job optimizing the software for it to perform very nicely with the hardware here on the device. Another cool thing too is that with One UI 2.0, we're getting a lot of bonus features, different features that you typically would not find with stock Android. And I go over all of that in my dedicated tips and tricks video about the device. Now this particular variant of the Samsung Galaxy A21, which I purchased from Metro by T-Mobile, does feature NFC. However, I'm not sure if every variant of the device will have NFC. Since some variants haven't been launched yet, I have no way of knowing. But my recommendation is to double check for the specific variant of the phone that you're buying to see if it does indeed have NFC. But the fact that this phone does is a very good sign. Now, as far as call quality goes, that's been a very good experience here with the phone. No issues to report when it comes to that, so keep that in mind. But now that we've gone over the major specifications of the Samsung Galaxy A21, let's take a closer look at the hardware. So I already talked a lot about the front panel here, but I am a big fan of having the hole punch for the front-facing camera. I personally prefer that over having a notch. I feel like this gives you a more immersive experience, and in general, I think it's better but let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now the device has a matte plastic band right around the sides of it. On the left side, we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. On the right side, we have the power button and volume buttons. On the top, we have the noise canceling microphone. And on the bottom, we have the speaker. We have the USB-C port for charging and data transfer. We have the microphone and we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Then on the back of the device, we have, of course, the camera module, flash, fingerprint sensor, and Samsung logo. I really like the piano black color on this device. I think it looks really good. It does pick up a lot of fingerprints, and definitely take a look at the link in the video description to see what other colors are being offered, as I'm sure they will eventually come out with more additional colors. The Samsung Galaxy A21 is an excellent device for going on social media. You can see that Instagram is nice and smooth here on the phone, so that's excellent to see. So really no lag or other issues like that. You can easily swipe through and view your various stories as well. That's nice and smooth. And then you can swipe over to create your own stories if you want to. So I'm creating a story here with my Samsung Galaxy A21. A21. I'm creating a story here with my Samsung Galaxy A21. 
So very good microphone quality as well with the phone, which is excellent. In camera, and then we'll switch over to the ultra wide and you can see a lot more content is able to fit into the frame. And then video content looks really good here on the phone. However, keep in mind that since the device does feature a 720p display, you are limited at watching YouTube videos at 720p. Now, thankfully, they do look good here on the phone. I don't mind. You can also crop in if you want a more immersive experience as well. So that's another cool bonus too. And the speaker quality does get decently loud. However, all of the sound does come out of the one speaker here on the bottom, whereas other devices like the Moto G Power, for example, have audio that comes out of both the dedicated speaker and the earpiece as well. So in a situation like this, where you're watching video in landscape mode, you're actually getting stereo sound. So that would have been something I would have liked to see here with the Samsung Galaxy A21, but at the same time, it's not a deal breaker either. I mean, I am glad that in general, the audio does get decently loud here on the device. This is also a very good phone for browsing the web. So pages load decently quickly. They're also very smooth to scroll through. So in general, not too bad. There are some limitations due to three gigabytes of RAM. You can see when I'm scrolling, it does have to kind of pick up the pace here and pull up the other content. But in general, I don't mind it. And this is another benefit of having that 20 by nine aspect ratio display is that you can fit more of a web page or a feed into the image here on the phone, especially compared to a device that's maybe a little bit shorter, but wider. Now, one of the biggest surprises with the Samsung Galaxy A21 definitely has to be the photo and video quality. Now, I'll let you be the judge for the video quality in a second here, but as far as the photo quality goes, I am extremely impressed for multiple reasons. The first thing is that the phone does a good job whether you're using the ultra wide camera, standard camera, portrait mode, or even the macro camera. Now, other devices that I've used, such as the LG K51, for example, have a decent main camera, but the ultra wide camera is really bad. But thankfully, with the Samsung Galaxy A21, that simply is not the case. Ultra wide photos look nice and crisp and clear. Standard photos look good as well. And I'm really impressed too with being able to take nice, clear portrait mode photos with the front facing camera that do an excellent job knowing where exactly to blur things out. So in general, I am really, really, really happy about the cameras here with the Samsung Galaxy A21. Now, of course, they are a downgrade compared to other devices such as the Samsung Galaxy S20, which is Samsung's flagship, but that device is close to $1,000. So the fact that the A21 is much cheaper, but still can take really good photos is certainly a very excellent thing. But let's now take a look at some video samples here from the phone. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here coming at you with a test video using the front facing camera from the Samsung Galaxy A21. So let me know what you think of the quality from the camera here. I think it seems pretty good from what I can see in the viewfinder. Of course, let me know also what you think of the microphone quality and whether or not you think this phone would be a good vlogging camera. It seems pretty good though so far. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here coming at you with a 1080p test video from the Samsung Galaxy A21 using the main camera on the phone. So let me know what you think of the quality from the device. We do have autofocus in video mode, which is awesome. Also, let me know what you think of the microphone quality from the device because sometimes that can be hit or miss with these budget phones. Do a close up of the grass, which is fake, by the way. It is kind of in the evening right now. Of 
cool. But let me know what you think of the quality. And here's a 1080p test video using the ultra wide angle camera with the Samsung Galaxy A21. So definitely a bit wider here. There is no autofocus in this mode, at least for close up, but that's okay. Let me know what you think of the quality. So in conclusion, is the Samsung Galaxy A21 worth buying? Is this phone a good choice? Well, I think it comes down to two different things. The first thing is the price that you can get it at, and the second thing is, is the types of needs that you have for a phone. So since this phone will be making its way over to a variety of different carriers, they're going to be offering it at really good deals. Now, I don't know exactly what those deals are going to be, but if history repeats itself, they're going to be offering the same promotions that we saw with last year's Samsung Galaxy A20. So in many situations, the phone is being offered for free if you switch in from another carrier. And if you've been a loyal customer and you want to do an upgrade, then sometimes they even offer this phone for $99 or maybe around $150. So the point is, is that most people are not going to pay the MSRP of $250. And if you do, then I don't feel like it's a bad choice either. But I'm just saying the majority of people out there are going to be paying a fraction of the MSRP for this phone, which makes it an even greater value. Now, if you are one of those people that does want to pick this up factory unlocked for around 250 bucks, then I still do think it's a decent choice. Now, that price point is very competitive. We have other phones such as the LG Stylo 6 and the Moto G Power, with the Moto G Power really being one of my favorites in this price point. So I feel like at 250 they should have given us a better processor in general. But again, since most people are going to be paying a fraction of the MSRP for this phone by getting it through a carrier, then that does make this phone a much better value for the money. So in conclusion, I like the phone. If you are a power user, maybe someone that's had a flagship phone in the past, then you might not be too impressed with the Galaxy A21. But if you are someone that's upgrading from a Galaxy A10e, for example, or you're upgrading from an older budget phone, then you'll definitely be very pleased with the Galaxy A21. And then of course, if you are someone that really values camera quality, then you're gonna be very pleased with this phone as well. So there certainly are a decent amount of shortcomings to this phone that I've addressed in this video and go into further detail in my dedicated pros and cons video. And hopefully they address some of these shortcomings with next year's A22. But for now, I think the A21 is a very solid phone from the company. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all think about it. But let me know what you think. Definitely take a look at the link in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing. But my name is Kevin. This is my Samsung Galaxy A21 review. And I will see you in the next video.